Kia ora, I'm Tiana Haxton and you're watching The Creative Coconuts Episode 2. In this locally produced art show, we're going to take you on an insightful expedition through the minds of our artists. We explore various fields, disciplines and mediums of art itself and we hear from our creative community. Not only about the joy of creating something beautiful, but also the challenges of what it's like to be a creator. Our first creative was trained in the art of Hokkaido in Christchurch, which is a traditional Māori carving of wood, bone or stone. He was also mentored by Cook Island's Tokoro Jim for carving shell, and his friends then nudged him into the field of tattooing. The artist we'll be hearing from today is none other than Raniera Ellison. So, without further ado, sit back, relax, and let's step inside the mind of the artist. Hi, my name is Raniera Ellison, and I'm an artist in the cooks. It's news. For wood carving, and, and, and kind of the, the start of my career was maybe 10 years ago. Um, I learned to carve wood in Christchurch, uh, to do Whakaero in Christchurch. And then after the earthquakes, I moved back to Rao and then I uh, was lucky enough to work under, uh, with, under Tokiro um, and he taught me shell and then um, it slowly moved into tattooing with the help of a lot of the local artists. The wood carving of the Whakairo actually gave me a really great base in understanding so many different aspects of uh, tikanga and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and then the shell carving opened, uh, helped to train my, my hand, my coordination a little bit, bit better and I was able to, to create Finer lines and yeah. I enjoy the meditative process of you know being in that zone. Um, when it's when you're creating for yourself, it's uh, just being able to to express whatever it is that you're yourself and whatever medium. Um, with tattooing, I, I enjoy uh, kind of like bringing out people's stories on their skin. Um, and especially when it comes to, ta to tattooing, you're always wondering if that, that mark that you put on someone's body is definitely the right mark for them and a mark that will see them, you know, for the rest of their lives. Um, and with uh, shells and wood, it's more about um, trying to find the beauty or you know whatever it is the, that the medium's trying to, the wood's trying to trying to tell you um, and trying to bring that forward. When I work with shell and wood, I can start off with a, a specific plan and as soon as I make the first cut, I know that's not, that's not the best thing for this piece. And that's just the artist side of it. You know, like, is the work that I'm producing really good enough for, and, and that's a hard thing to, to kind of get through, is to break those barriers. It's just the process of, of uh, just following your intuition really, and that's what I'm passionate about. That's why I like to create. At the moment I'm doing digital art, looking at uh, 3D animation, 2D animation, um, more kind of graphic design, logo stuff, um, more kind of storytelling and all of that kind of stuff. And uh, it's been a grind. I spent about 
12 hours trying to make a video of like a triangle go like this and another circle go like this and then a wave go like this. And, it was, and then I clicked OK and then it said something like, it's not gonna work. And I was like, Pfft. But it's worth it. In the end, like I have a vision of things that I'm working on. Um, there's a few projects that I want to get going. So I'm just, I'm just developing my skills so that I can create those, those pieces to a higher standard um, and hopefully create uh, other forms of creative expression here in the Cooks. Starting, starting a business or trying to be a creative and, and turn it into a, a way of generating income and living off the income is, is difficult. Um, there are so many moments of, you know, am I, am I good enough to do this? You're constantly you know, second guessing yourself. But then also on the business side, that's a whole different ball game. Like you got to learn about taxes and you know how you can leverage your 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 income and stuff like that. Or, you know, and and then setting aside and then and then the long term goal of um, being a successful artist is also about financial. Being smart financially, and because from my experience, you know, it comes in waves and it ebbs and flows, and you have to have the, the foresight to to be like, okay, I've got to set something aside for myself so that if things go, then I'll be okay. Either you, you got to a point where you were like, okay, I'm gonna stop pissing around and stop doing it for fun, or I'm gonna and take it seriously, or you know, just not do it at all. Like, do you know what I mean? I mean, you've put so much effort into it, then why not go all the way and see how far you can take something? And, and if you can do that as a way of, uh, you know, using your passions or your art as a way of providing a living for your family and stuff like that or and still maintaining your creativity then why not give it a go um so it started with my brother he he's the guy that that um for him he's been on a big mental uh, men's mental health awareness buzz um, and for November last year, he decided that instead of you know just talking about it and sitting on his sitting on his ass, he was going to do something about it. And he asked us to join in. Um, and I think that's the other part of, of being a creative too is that we are quite. It's a really there's a really high chance that being a creative. That, you, you, you battle with those 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 things yourself um, so it's not a, so I, for me it was a great thing to, to
to join in on because, yeah, as, as an artist, I, I too suffer from depression and anxiety and all of that kind of stuff too. So it was cool to, to kind of, to do something positive and bring more awareness to that. Could the government be more helpful in, in helping creatives in the cooks? Yes. You know, and, and you know, there have been a few times where we've had to fund ourselves to go and, a lot of times where we've had to go and fund ourselves for certain things and for our own development. And currently it's just, it is what it is. I mean, I can't, I don't want to, I don't want to be the guy that's like, government should be helping us. Because, yeah, they should be, but it doesn't, government not helping me is not going to stop me from, from being an artist anyway. Do you know, like, it would help, it would be, it'd be a great help. Even if it was just a way of, you know, helping us to, not even for myself, but, you know, for the next generation and all of that kind of stuff, for, for my kids to, to be open to different experiences and different ways of uh, creating a life for themselves. I think that it's probably the, the biggest thing that our government could help us with is just opening those doors because you know, there's so many ways and our current situation has has kind of opened my eyes up to it. I've never, there are so many creative uh, uh, creative areas that you could you could move into just being based here and it's all digital um, so a way of developing digital art in the cooks would be cool I think it'd be super helpful the way that the world's going is you know we've got people in overseas developing glasses like TV screens and iPhones so at some point in time you know we were going to be walking around with these contacts or something and, and all these glasses and we got to develop our community for our children to be able to to enter those those spaces you know at the, the highest level and that comes in, in terms of like knowledge on 3d programs and coding and UX design and stuff like that even something as simple as designing a logo it's a it's a real niche market but it's a market out there that that you can you can do f from here for somewhere overseas and, and like yeah we could wait for the government but we've got to be the as the the current artists we have to be the ones that uh, spearhead that and we can't be waiting around for someone else to do it it's just about being practical and and you know the people before us did the same thing the likes of Mike Tavioni, T um, I don't know much other artists but Ian George comes to mind Ted Nia um, you know they, 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 they made some big steps for us and so it's important for us to continue on those steps for the next people to come through If you are really passionate about something, you will find a way to do it. And and I'm and, and I'm the type of person that is open to helping wherever I can, even if it's just to look at it, something that you've done and give my opinion, or to to maybe give you a, an idea on options. Like I'm always happy to help and when it comes to that. And I think that the art creator community here is is open but like with anything you have to you have to take the first step you know it, it, it might be hard to to walk up to someone and be like hey I'm a, I want to be an artist you know can I spend time with you or something like that it might be scary but it's important to to do you know we can't 
We don't know that you want to be a creative until you come and see us, or we don't know that you need help until you want to come see us. And, and I, I do think that the creative community here is, is actually a lot more giving and understanding and helpful in my experience. Um, it's just about those younger artists uh, stepping out really. And, and if you do, then, then opportunities come. You know what I mean? You have to fight for your opportunities here. And, and it's, it's hard, but it's worth it in the end, you know? Like, to know that you took that leap and, and to, to know that there's a supportive community out there. From what, what I've experienced is that being a creative is can be difficult because because you've got so many things that you want to do, um, and, and it's just about allocating. From a practical perspective, you just got to allocate the time. You got to make those short-term sacrifices for the long-term gain. You know, it might be spending seven hours on trying to paint one line instead of going out to town on a Friday or Saturday night but and, and that's part of it and just enjoying the process and the hardest and I guess another important thing would be to just put yourself out there and, and at the end of the day not to worry about what other people think about your art it's, a, it's an expression of you and that, yeah, like you can't be down about what will people think if I share this piece. And that's something that I have to do myself. <laughs> I have to take my own advice on that one. And that's all for the Creative Coconuts episode two. Make the kiranu nui to you, Raniera, for your time letting us all know about your creative journey. In our next episode, we hear from another artist who enjoys taking ink to skin, creating permanent pieces of art, Luther Berg of Next Tattoo. To catch his story, be sure to tune in to episode three, where we step inside the studio and see what he's all about. Until then, thank you for watching and kakite akone.